I'm Doug, and on behalf of everyone at Celestian, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this video on the F12 X200 and the F12 M150 triple cone full range guitar speakers. These speakers are specifically designed to be placed in traditional guitar enclosures so you can take your favorite modeling device and get that live response that so many players feel is lacking when they turn their favorite modeler up. So the goal of this video is to help you make the best choices in terms of putting together these types of rigs. And with that in mind, we're going to break this video down into three main sections. In a moment, we're going to talk about the four main things you want to keep in mind when putting together one of these types of rigs. Then we're going to go into some A-B demos, and we're going to discuss which or both of these speakers is going to potentially be best for your needs. Then in the main demo sections, we're going through a ton of demos broken down into rig types. All right, four main things to keep in mind. Number one, how much space do you need to fill? If it's a small amount of space, like maybe your bedroom or maybe your music room, a 112 is probably going to be just fine for you. Number two, do you primarily play one style? If, for example, you primarily play blues, something with an open back is probably going to be perfect for you. Number three, modularity. I love the 1968 cabinets from Marshall because you can run them in mono or stereo. Small to medium sized venue, I can bring one. Larger venue, I'm going to bring a second one, so modularity for me is important. And number four, I think for all of us, we've got to stay within our budget, right? So with those four things in mind, in a second, we're going to get to the A-B demos. But before we do that, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please don't forget to ring the bell so we can let you know when new videos are going to go online. With that said, let's get to it. The biggest difference between the F12 X200 and the F12 M150 triple cone which moving forward we're going to refer to respectively as the X200 and the triple cone, is that the triple cone is less deep. There are going to be enclosures where the X200 just won't fit. For example, the Hot Rod Deluxe 4, the X200 won't fit in there. Triple cone fits just fine. Now, looking at the chart down below, one might think that the triple cone is less bright, but that's actually not the case. The two speakers sound very much alike. And as you're about to hear, the biggest difference is the X200 is a little bit fuller in the bottom end, and the triple cone is a little bit brighter in the top end. Nothing that you couldn't adjust for with a little bit of EQ to make them pretty much identical, but the fact that they're a little bit different is a good thing. We'll be talking about that more in the main demo section. Let's take a listen. Down below in the show notes, you're going to find timeline links for the five main categories that I've organized the rigs into. Basically, there's going to be a short intro and the three demos that'll play back to back. A little bit of information, lots of music, minimal amount of talking. Now, the Celestian folks had encouraged me to share some of my favorite rigs, so I want to do that now. Inside the 112 combo category, the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe 4. The lone entry in the 212 combo, the Roland JC120. You're going to get a chance to hear that both with a pair of X200s as well as a blend of the X200 and the triple cone. And then my third favorite was the pair of 1968 cabinets in combination with my Seymour Duncan Power Stage 700 Power Amp. All right, we're going to start things off with the Hot Rod Deluxe 4 and that intro. Let's get to it. The Hot Rod Deluxe was one of my favorites for a couple of key reasons. First of all, on its own, it's a great amplifier. You can buy it new, you can buy it used, and in particular, the four got some TLC from a guy over at Fender named Stan Cody, who's an amp genius. He fixed some of the things that I wasn't crazy about in the previous versions of the amplifier. 
In any case, there's not a huge amount of real estate in the back, so you can only fit the triple cone in there. But in this particular instance, this amp did a great job, and hopefully that will be borne out by the demos. Let's take a listen. Mm -hmm. Like the Hot Rod Deluxe 4, the Nextron Artist is available both new and used, but it does not have a two power amp section. Instead, it's got the ability to manipulate a virtual power amp section, which is very cool. Just keep in mind that on your modeler, if you have the possibility of just using a preamp model and turning off power amp modeling inside your modeler, that's a good place to start when building your tones. Regardless, let's take a listen. Unfortunately, the DT series amplifiers have been discontinued because I really like them. Two power amp section designed by Ryan Holt Bogner. And the only thing that's better than one of them is two in stereo. Although the valve state's been discontinued, it's a great candidate for this particular type of application. First of all, it's got a solid state power amp, which means it doesn't have a tendency to want to color whatever you put into the effects loop, which is, by the way, how I'm getting to all these different amplifiers, bypassing the preamp, going into the power amp in of the effects loop. 
So here's one of the other things that's very cool about the valve state, unlike the other combos thus far. There's a lot of room inside the cabinet, which is why I was able to use the X200 versus the triple cone that you heard on the previous demos. Let's take a listen. The Roland JC120 is another one of my favorites for this type of application. It's been in continuous production since 1975, so you can get it new and used. On the used market, they are about 500 bucks on a good day. They sound great, and the older models feature a pair of main ends. That's how I'm accessing the two 60-watt solid-state power amps that power each of the different speakers. So for this first trio of demos, you're going to hear the blend of the X200 and the triple cone. As much as I love the sound of that blend, most of the time if I'm going for a true stereo signal, I will opt for two of the same speakers, which is what I'm doing for this next trio of demos utilizing a pair of X200s. spent some time today researching the history of the Mesa Boogie Theo 112 cabinet. And the consensus is that they were originally designed around and for the Electric Voice EVM 12L. And for the purists out there to swap that speaker out is sacrilege. Now, interestingly enough, Mesa Boogie still makes that cabinet, but they load it with a Celestian C90. So the point being is that swapping the speaker out is going to be offensive to some, but for others, it's amazing. These cabinets sound and behave much more like a 412 cabinet. They're small, so getting back to that modularity thing, if you want to bring one, 
That's great. For a bigger gig, bring two. But the way these cabinets respond and feel, especially with a pair of the triple cones, is nothing short of amazing. Let's take a listen, starting off with my ES-335. And that gets us to another one of my top picks, the blend of the X200 and the triple cone in an X pattern in my Marshall 1968 cabinets. They sound amazing. One of the really important things about the 1960A cabinets is that the top speakers are pointed up towards you if you're on a shallow stage. You can hear what the actual sound is like. This is particularly important if you're using something like the Axe FX that has multiple outputs you want to make sure that the sound that you're hearing and using to adjust your sound is, if you will, synonymous with what's going to be coming front of house. A lot of guitar players have a tendency to have their speakers pointing at the back of their leg. And it means that if you use a direct out, it's probably going to be too bright coming out of the PA and you won't know it. In any case, I love the way these demos came out. You will be hearing the blend of the speakers. Let's take a listen. <music> The Rev D20, or in this particular case, a pair of them, is perfect for building these types of rigs. You can use a huge range of routing options, leveraging the built-in power amp, going into the power amp in so you bypass the preamp, using that to power up these cabinets. Got to have some sort of power amp, right? The other thing is you can go into the front end of the amps, and in turn, you can then leverage the embedded two-notes torpedo technology to bring up some sort of virtual power amp using the direct out into something like the back of the JC120. The range of things you can do is awesome. You can incorporate a pedal board, four cable method, five cable method, so on and so forth. Most important thing is they sound great and again, offer a huge range of options. And with the second one, again, we have the modularity factor. Let's take a listen. <laughs> On behalf of everyone at Celestian, thanks so much for checking out this video. 
For more information about the F12 X200 and the F12M 150 triple cone, please visit Celestian.com. And again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we'd like to invite you to do so. And don't forget to ring the bell so we can let you know when the next videos are going to go online. In the meantime, thanks again for watching. Cheers.